Hello everyone, in this video, the step 4, we will show how can we set up the trend or the trace to show the curve of the set point input and output of the PID. In the previous video, step 4, sub A, we discussed how we can use the trace function, which is from one built-in function from the controller, and how we can set up the trace function. In this video, we will mainly talk about how we can use the HMI build up the train function. And since we can use the simulation of the HMI function, so when we use this train function, actually we do not need an actual HMI touch panel. We can only use a laptop to run this train. All right, let's go to the TIA portal and let's set up the HMI project. And method two, we will use uh, HMI and use the train to function from the HMI. Let me quickly build up one HMI and quickly set up this channel monitoring. Okay, let's quickly build up one HMI project. Even if from this sample project, we already have one KTP 900 basic HMI already. So to build up that HMI trained project, I will use the Siemens Comfort panel. Let's double click this new device. And this time I will select HMI and select this schematic uh, comfort panel and uh, I will select the 7 inch display okay this panel all right he's okay the system will pop up this uh, wizard to help us to build up the connection between the HMI and the PLC we can follow this so let's browse the CPU so the controller I will connect to the i7 1215 this controller clicked and uh, using the ethernet all right next and uh, background we will use the default so the system will automatically build up some sample structure as shown in the screen okay hit the next and the alarm screen okay from here we can quickly set up the navigator screen to allow you to jump between the screens Okay, so from this way, this is a very good method. Using this method, we can quickly build up some system-wise screens. For example, the system setting, user administration, and uh, system operation, something like that. All right, let's hit the finish. So. We build up this project. Let's firstly move away about this screen button. Uh, for example, I can move them on the top of the screen. Leave a room for our train. So let's go to the device hardware configuration because we need to set the IP address of this uh, HMI. Okay, Ethernet address of this uh, HMI, that is a 1.2 by default. We can set a 198, okay? And uh, let's go to the HMI tax. Uh, and then let's go to the connection here. Through that wizard, we can see the system automatically build up this uh, hardware connection here. The CPU, that is uh, the 1200 CPU, that is a 1.200 IP address. And uh, this HMI, that is a 1.198, okay? After the connection, let's go to the root screen here. So in this screen, we will build up the train. And firstly, we need to build up the tag connection between the HMI and the PLC because we need to monitor that two tags. One is the analog channel input, one is the analog output channel. Okay, so to allow the HMI show this tag, one easier way that is this. We can go to the PLC program here. This is the, the tag from the analog input. And we can drag the tag into the HMI. Firstly, we need to go to the date block, AIAO here. And then let's go to the date block, AIAO. From the HMI, we need to show this channel 1 scaled underscore A and this real source, this two value. So to allow the HMI to show this, we can click this tag and drag to the HMI. See this process and the release. This is the analog input. And to show this analog output, we can drag this analog 
and drag here, release. And next thing is we can drag the text and put the name on the left of this uh, I.O. field. After this drag, it's not only drag to I.O. field here, actually the system automatically build up the connection between the HMI and the PLC. At this time, if we go back to the HMI tag, so we will see the PLC tag and uh, the HMI tag, they are automatically built up. So using the TI portal, this uh, comfort panel or KTP basic panel to build up the connection between the HMI and the PLC, this is a very common way we can drag the tag between the PLC and the HMI, which is very convenient. We can drag this uh, text here. I can type in this is a uh, AI input. and uh, drag another text here, this is the analog output. Okay, and then we can check this uh, properties here. So through this drag, we will see the TI portal automatically build up this connection. This is the PLC tag, and this is the actual name of the HMI tag here. And this L field, that is a uh, input output, but because this value come from the analog. So actually, we will select the output only. And this analog control, this value will be used to control the analog output. So we will leave this uh, default input output here. Okay. And then to line up this, we can click all of them and select this to line up the to build up the train wheel uh, let's go to the right side here select the control here select this uh, chart and uh, drag it to here so that is the train of this uh, HMI So to allow this train to show this, we need to config the tag here. So from this train, the properties of this train, let's type in, we need two trains here. Double click, it will automatically create a, another train here. The train one, we can name this the train for analog input. And the train two, that is for analog output. And input, I like to use the green. The analog output, I like to use the red, okay? The source, uh, let's select the, the source value. Click this as a process value. And the source for the analog input, we will select this. Okay, channel one, scaled underscore eight. We will select this, the channel one, scaled it, underscore eight. Click the okay. And the cyclic time, this is one second, makes sense. Okay. And this uh, analog output, same thing. We will select this uh, analog output, real source, select. So the trained value so this trained value here, that means in this chart from left to right, with this uh, one second cycle time, how many value we can show in this uh, whole range. 100 can be used as a default. If you want to show more, you can type in more. But this trend has its uh, limitations here. We will leave the default here. Other than this settings, we also need to take care of this, the side. As we know, the analog input that scale rate value that is from 0 to 10. At 0 to 10 volts. But this analog output that is from 0 to 100. So the units of this y-axis for both two values, they are not the same. So we need to separate the y-axis. In this train, it provides one good feature. We can use the left and the right to different axis. 
For example, for the analog input, we can use the left side. And for the analog output, we can use the right side. Okay, to set this left side and the right side, we can go to the properties here. The left value. The left value, we can select the axis start from zero and add a 10. Because this is an analog input, or you can select this auto size. And for this right value axis, that is an analog output, start from zero and add a 100. That is a zero to 100 percent. So this allows this train to show the value. We will see the left side it already showed a zero to ten, and the right side this is a zero to one hundred. They are using the different uh, axis. Okay, so let's save and uh, compile. While the system is uh, building up this uh, project, we also need to check one additional setting. Maybe someone will ask, if I don't have HMI, this panel, what I can do? If you don't have this HMI comfort panel or KTB panel in your hand, it doesn't matter, don't worry. We can use this start simulation, use your laptop as a HMI screen, and you can operate and monitor in your laptop. And then next thing is, uh, how can we use this uh, HMI simulation to communicate with your actual controller? So there's one additional setting we need to go to the control panel of your Windows system. Control panel, go to the set PGPC interface. And make sure this i7 online step seven, this access point point to the actual hardware interface. This access point i7 online step seven need to be point to the interface that interface is communicating with your hardware plc in my case uh, my laptop is communicating with a plc using one cable ethernet cable so that communication interface i'm using this line this uh this is my ethernet card and that is a tcp ip that is activate so make sure you need to select this i7 online and select the port in your case you are communicating with your hardware. And then click and click the OK. Because the HMI simulation is using this access point. With this setting, the HMI use this access point and use this interface to communicate with the hardware PLC. Here I would like to talk about a little bit more. If you are using the PLC SIM as a controller, and uh, if you are using the HMI, want to communicate with a simulated controller. So this interface, uh, we need to select the PLC SIM. And this uh, access point is still i7 online. Okay, click the OK. All right, we finished the compile and, uh, and let's keep this uh, start simulation. And let's wait for a while, let the system build up the communication. Okay, so as we can see, this simulated HMI already communicated with this uh, actual controller. So the value is showing here. If I rotate this uh, potential point meter, we will see this uh, green curve is changing. That is an uh, analog input. And from here, because this I.O., that is an analog input, we set output only. So if I double click this, it won't allow me to type in anything. But this analog control here, that is an input and an output. So it allows us to type in something. For example, if I click the 50 here, so we will see this control signal changed from 30 to 50. 
Okay, that is the HMI train function. As we can see, it only uses a too long time. Basically, five minutes, that's enough. It quickly build up this train and allows us to quickly monitor the process change. Okay, that is uh, the comfort panel HMI. And if you recall from this uh, sample program, and this uh, sample program from this ID, we can download this uh, sample program. We already introduced this uh, sample program from the step one video. And uh, in this uh, sample program, it also have a one built-in HMI. That is uh, the PID HMI KTP 900. And in this HMI, you can go to the screen, and uh, this is a trend. And this is that trend from this uh, KTP. And uh, if we go to the properties, we will see the similar settings as we introduced. In this trend, it has uh, three curves here. The PID side point, and the PID feedback, that is the process feedback, that is uh, this. And the PID control, that is the right curve. The typical value to monitor one PID loop, that is uh, this three value, side point, process value, feedback, and the PID control. And uh, from this setting, we will see, uh, using this bar, we will see, because the side point and the process value feedback input, they are the same unit. So that's why both of them, they use the left side, this axis. But for the control output, this axis is using the right axis here. That unit, that is a percent value. So that's why this axis is from zero to 100. It's configured like this. But left side, this sample program is showing a speed value input. So that's why it is from zero to 1500. This is a speed unit. Okay, all right. That is uh, the step four, step B. How can we set up the HMI train? Comparing with the previous uh, sub A video, the trace function that come from the hardware itself, but the storage, it will take the load memory of the controller. If you need to trace, you need to record the long curve, uh, we'd better use the HMI train function. And through this video, I showed how can we use the simulated HMI so that we do not need a hardware so we can build up the simulated HMI. And this simulated HMI can still communicate with the actual PLC controller showing the online data. You can use the HMI quickly build up the trend from this HMI and uh, config three important values from the PID, side point, process feedback, the PID input, and the PID output config this three essential value into this train so that you can monitor the process. All right, that is for today. In this video, we showed how we can set up the HMI train function for showing the process feedback, set point, and control signal of the PID. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumb up. If you like to watch more videos in my channel, please subscribe and hit the bell. Thank you for watching.